morning. Good morning. We welcome you to Bethsaida Baptist this morning. My name is Brad Ball. I'm the pastor at Bethsaida. And if you're a guest with us this morning, we're so glad uh, to have you in the house. Or if you're online with us and you're a guest, uh, we welcome you. And if you are a guest, we just encourage you, just pull out your phone and text uh, guest to 478-242-7200. All we're asking for is a name and the email address. And all we're going to do is say thank you for being uh, in this service, but in honor of you, we'll actually donate $5 in honor of you to a local clinic we have, Joy Clinic, uh, that our Baptist churches have and administer to people in our area that do not have health insurance, but most of all, they'll share the love of Jesus with them. And so we're just so glad uh, to have you here this morning. We just want to remind you we exist to be passionate about life change, and ultimately we want to help you grow in your relationship come to know Christ and grow in that relationship with Jesus Christ. Let me give you a couple announcements very quickly. Tuesday, uh, we're doing shock and awe. You say, what's that? It's one of the most favorite things I love to do every year. Uh, next week will be uh, Administrative Assistance Week, and what we'll do is take carnations and a card uh, to uh, those that serve all across our city and county, and what we'll do is just go in and say thank you for serving. We'll go into schools. We'll go anywhere. Uh, we'll go uh, in the city and county offices. And so if you can help Tuesday, I do need just a few more people to help. You say, I can't come at 10, but I could come at 1130. Or I could come at 1 o'clock. Hey, that's fine. We'll take any help we can. Uh, but if you want to go, uh, reason I call it shock and awe is uh, you will blow people away by going into their place of business and saying, hey, uh, we just want to give you a flower today and say thanks for your service. And I promise you, every year I get cards every year from people saying, man, I cannot believe somebody did this. So if you want to blow people away by loving on people this week, uh, call the office tomorrow. I'd love to have, if you can only go for 30 minutes, you need to go for 30 minutes. You will be, you'll be blessed, I'm just telling you. Uh, just showing the love of Christ in just practical ways in this culture, huh, uh, I promise you, uh, will be a blessing to somebody this week. Also, um, just to remind you, parents and students, we have a meeting after the service, about five minutes after the service. Also, VBS, uh, meeting this Wednesday night after the service. Anybody interested in that? We need you here Wednesday night after the service. 
uh, 6.30, so that uh, after that 6.30 service. So if you can help in any way, you want to be part of that, uh, concerned about kids, please show up. That'll be Wednesday night, okay? So let's go, Lord, in prayer and ask for his hand to be upon this service. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning, and we just do praise you. We do want to sing to you, Lord. We want to sing songs of worship about you. Your great and wondrous works. But Father, also in this stillness right here, Lord. May you prepare our hearts. Again, Lord, I know we've come in here 8,000 different directions facing different circumstances. We all have different stresses. And so, Lord, in this just this short service, May we put those aside. And may you captivate our thoughts. Lord, I ask that you would just please meet with us this morning. Speak to each individual to their deepest point of need. You, Sam, and the band, and their gifts and talents to usher us into your presence, and we welcome your presence, and you, we welcome your spirit. And so we praise you, Lord, for how you will minister to each person. In Jesus' name, amen.
the Son of the Lord Church. Honor Him this morning. Amen. a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I Church, amen.
if you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I have. This morning, church, honor him. Amen. You may be seated. I do want to praise God for his, his goodness and his grace. I uh, do want to just personally thank God for his goodness. Uh, thank you all for your prayers over the last three weeks, basically, with Mom. And thank you so much for your prayers and your meals, your visits. Uh, thank you so much for that. She is doing some better each and every day. Uh, so, again, thank you all uh, for your prayers. All right, kids, time for Children's Church. All right. All righty. Okay, praise the Lord that we do have kids, and they are the next generation, and uh, pray they'll give us some of their energy. Uh, amen? Amen. They're full of energy, and uh, we're grateful that they do have energy, and uh, you pray for Dusty and Aaron as they go try to teach them and work with all that energy, and so just uh, pray God's blessings on them. So... Let me remind you, you can give uh, in the house. There's a box there, a box in the back. Again, you can give online. You can text give. You can drop it in the mail. You drop it by the office. And because you're faithful to give, that's why we'll do go out Tuesday and touch people uh, and pay money to buy carnations and, and uh, do things like that because you're faithful to give. And because you're faithful to give, we're able to do ministry. And so we thank you. Again, thank you for that. So let's go, Lord, in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just welcome you. And Lord, again, you are, as we just sang about, you are so good to us. You're good all the time. There's not a time that you're not good. There's not a time that you're not faithful. There's not a time that you're not merciful. Because, Lord, if you could take us out any time you want to, because you're God but you're good to us, and we thank you. And so, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would guide us as we open up your word this morning. Help me to say what you want to be said. Help me not to get in your way. Cleanse my tongue, and may this be a life-changing word. Because it's your word, Lord. So, Lord, as Zechariah says, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Most of you have one of these, and all of you more than likely have one of these. This is a cell phone. You can go anywhere in the world, and people have them. When I was in Haiti, Two years ago. Anywhere you go, Haiti is one of the poorest nations in the world. They make a good job is 58 cents an hour. They all had cell phones. Even in our own country, people have cell phones. And again, when President Obama was in place, he actually had a cell phone. If you didn't have a cell phone, you could get a cell phone. So everybody in the whole world can talk to somebody because they have 
a cell phone. And what do we communicate? We communicate with people. We call people up. And we communicate with people. That's why we have cell phones. We communicate through social media and the phone all over the world t today. This has made us have access to anything and anybody everywhere now. But today I want to talk to you in this new series that we're kicking off, Prayer, the Pew, and the Pulpit. I want to talk to you about, do you have God's phone number? You might have a cell phone, but can you call up God? Can you talk to God today? Do you have his, do you have his number See, God has a telephone number whether you realize it or not, and He wants you to use it. So the goal of this message is pretty simple like this. Prayer is like calling someone on a phone and having a conversation with Him. That's prayer. We're going to dive into that. It's just like calling somebody on your phone, your best friend, you call up your spouse. Yeah, you can call up God the Father and have a conversation with Him. You're like, Where, why do I want to do this? So you hopefully grow closer to know the Lord. You're like, where in the world is this in the Bible? Well, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 33, and we'll show this to you. Three verses today. Jeremiah 33, verses 1 through 3. This is Old Testament. Who's Jeremiah? Jeremiah was a prophet of God. He'd been in prison. Why was he in prison? For preaching God's word. He prophesied and said, hey, King Zedekiah, God has said the Babylonians are going to come in and take you all captive. And he didn't like that preaching, which we already know happened in Canada, through the pastor in prison. I actually put a fence around the church and they couldn't go to worship. So if you don't think that's not coming to a community near you, you might want to start praying and walking with Jesus. Amen. So Jeremiah's in prison when God speaks this to him. And he already gave him the word of the Lord in, in verse chapter 32, and here we're going to see it in verse 30, chapter 32. He says, while he was still confined in the guard's courtyard, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time. The Lord who made the earth, the Lord who forms it to establish it, the Lord is his name, says this, call to me. He said, dial me up and talk to me. And I will what? Put you on hold. You got to wait till the next telemarketer, and it might be 45 minutes before they get to you. Didn't say that, praise God. He says, What? I will answer you and tell you great and incomprehensible things you do not know. Now, our Lord Jesus demonstrated preaching and teaching and discipling and serving and ministering to His disciples. You know what the disciples, the one thing they asked Him? And Luke 11 says, Lord, teach us to what? Pray. So I want you to understand, prayer is a conversation between you and God. Now you might be asking, do our prayers really matter? Do our prayers really make a difference? I believe they do. I really do. <laughs> I, I'm... I'm I'm testifying that prayer does matter. Prayer is one of the most awesome privileges you have as a Christ follower. You need to understand, the only place you're going to pray is going to be on earth. When you get to heaven, there'll be no more praying. There'll be no more preaching. So you need to understand, it's one of the most awesome privileges you have if you're a Christ follower in the house that you can actually call up God 24-7, anytime, anywhere, talk to Him and speak to Him, and you don't get a busy signal. So it's an awesome privilege. You say, why talk to God? Well, let me tell you, why talk to God is because most of the time we're not talking to God. 
Surveys tell us the average church leader speaks only four minutes a day in prayer. Four minutes a day in prayer ain't going to suffice. And if four minutes of prayer is what's happening in the, in the pulpit, that means less than four minutes, more than likely in the pew. That means God ain't going to do anything in our lives. So we need to understand the need to pray. I'm just going to tell you, am I an expert on this? No. Do I need to work on this? Yes. Is this for all of us? Yes. If you got it all down, Pat, please walk up now and you preach. So we're in the, all this boat together, okay? But I really do, you need to hear me. I really do think this is a crucial series in the life of this church. What we're doing on Wednesday night preaching on revival and praying for revival, I really do think is crucial for the life of this church. Now, you may not think so, and that's fine. But I'm telling you, as your pastor, I really do think these are crucial days that we understand, hey, you and I have access to talk to God anytime, anywhere. So let's talk about prayer. Let me give you three keys if you're going to call up God in prayer. Three keys. Number one. This is not rocket science, so everybody can get this. Prayer is talking to God. He says, call to me. And it's a command. God didn't say to Jeremiah, well, just if you think about it. No, he says, call to me, present tense, which means every day, call me up, dial me up, and talk to me. Now, who are you pray to? Look at verse 2. He says, the Lord who made the earth. We're to call up the Creator, Almighty God. There is only one God who created the heavens and the earth. Only one God. Not multiple gods. Only one God. His name says the Lord is His name. His name is Yahweh. And the Jews held it in such high esteem that every time they wrote it, they would then be baptized. They held his name in such high revere that they didn't even say Yahweh. They came out with Jehovah. See, you and I need to understand, we need to hold his name high in revere. Have all for who we're talking with. But you and I, as Christ folks, can talk to God. But too many times we get busy. Understand. We do not pray. Look at James 4, 2. He says, you desire and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. But number the last part, this is it. You do not have because you do not ask. You guys got to ask. You just got to talk with God. Now, sometimes, let's be honest. I don't know if you've been there, but uh, some of these days I'm right here. You ever been and you're like, I just don't even know what to pray, Lord. Let me tell you, that's not a bad place to be. Wordless prayer is not a bad place to be. Remember when I preached on silence and solitude in, in the series Tune Up? Sometimes we just need to sit before God, and sometimes we don't even know what to pray. It's like, Lord... And this is what you need to know in this point. This is a good point. Just sit in the presence of God and allow, allow God to minister to you. But don't forget this verse right here, Romans 8, 26 and 27. Don't miss this. It says, in the same way, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness because we don't know what to pray for, as we should. But the Spirit, don't miss this, Himself intercedes for us with what? Unspoken groanings. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit because he don't miss this. He intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. You say, explain this. Illustrate this for me. You moms that have babies, or when you had your babies, and the baby starts crying, wasn't it very soon you knew what each cry meant? Were they speaking, Mom, I want my food? Mom, change my diaper? No. See, praise God, the Holy Spirit and God knows the cries of our heart. See, sometimes prayer is talking to God. 
Just like you that are married, sometimes you, you, you need to have, if we preached on that, if you didn't see that message, good, communication to marriage. We, you need that communication. But, you know, sometimes, what's the best thing you can do as a husband's spouse? Just be in one another's presence. They're encouraging. Sometimes you don't even have to talk. Now, you do need to talk and commute, you know what I'm saying? But there are some times you just, hey, you're just sitting there enjoying being in the presence, knowing that your spouse is there and they're faithful there. They're encouraging you. And sometimes God is that way with us. And the Holy Spirit will pray for us. So let me just give you four areas. This is not on your outline, but you probably know this. But there's four, four ways that we can talk to God. Number one, voicing your praise and your worship to God. That's part of prayer. Just voice your praise to God, okay? That's part of prayer. But confessing your sins to God is too part of prayer. we all sinners. We all messed up. We're sinners by nature. We're going to get angry. We're going to have issues. We need to ask God to forgive us. And if you don't think you have sin, God says you're a liar, and you better get up here and repent fast because we all sin, and we probably all sinned before this morning got going. And so if you haven't confessed that sin, you might want to confess that sin right now. Or you won't hear a thing from God this morning. But then prayer is taking your request to God. You say, I got requests. I got issues. Take them to God. Talk to God. But then also pray for others. We all got brothers and sisters, we all got families, we got people that live all across the world that we know, and we have contact, how? Because of this. You need to understand, even your social media can be a way for you to pray. Instead of gossiping. So let me give you three facts about prayer very quickly. Number one, prayer is not supposed to be cliched, wrote sayings. What do you mean? It's just not about parenting some same old sayings, Lord, just bless them. You, you do whatever, you know, you know, hide them behind the cross. You know, you, you, you've just heard somebody say some phrases and you just start parroting them. You understand what I'm saying? That's not prayer. Prayer is where you and I just be honest with God. Just be honest with you're like You're like, Brad, right now I'm a little ticked at God. Well, just go ahead and be honest with him. He already knows you are. So, there ain't no hiding it. Just say, God, I don't understand. I'm frustrated. I talked with a brother this week. He said, I don't understand why you did this, Lord. Why didn't you do this to that person? Just be honest with God. God will work with you through that. Prayer's not about taking our agenda to God. Prayer's not about manipulating God. Prayer's not about twisting God's arm and saying, God, I want you to put your rubber stamp on my approval. Some of you are great at manipulating people, but you ain't going to manipulate God. It will not happen. You're like, why do I need to pray? Because you and I need help. And who can bring the help? God can. But God doesn't want your cliched, wrote sayings. He's like, don't give me some collect, these rote sayings like something from a telemarketer. They're just quoting the same old line every time they get someone to answer the phone. That's not prayer. God says, don't give me that. I don't want that in my face. He would rather you be brutally honest and say, Lord, I don't have the language, but Lord, this is what's going on. I need help. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Uh, that, God's going to hear more of that than you praying some flowery speech or trying to pray some King James, uh, you know, in the King James and very, thou heavenly father, and using some tone, thinking God's going to hear because you have such a tone. Well, just talk with God. You know when you call somebody up on the phone and you just talk with them? Talk the same way with God. He doesn't want your pretense. He just wants you. Let's move on. No prayers equals no growth in your relationship with the Lord Jesus. No prayers equals no growth 
in your relationship with the Lord Jesus. If you think you can call God up every three weeks, it ain't going to work. Clyde Cranford said this, not praying is the most arrogant thing we can do. God wants to bless us, but first He wants a relationship with us. In fact, He wants a growing relationship with us. You know, if you got children, and if you, husbands, you got a wife, you know how they spell love? T-I-M-E. Your kids don't want all your gifts, they want your time. God wants your time. You know why the church is powerless? It's because the people in the church are prayerless. And when it's all said and done, when we all get to heaven, if you know Jesus, when it's all said and done, I promise you this little thing right here will be the thing that God says because you, you got all wrapped up in this smartphone, you got all wrapped up in these devices, you got all wrapped up in this social media, and because you got chasing all that stuff, you never prayed, and that's why I never worked in your life. Didn't say that you can't use these. Just saying... Who's in charge? The phone? Or the Lord? See, no prayer, no growth. Let me give you this third fact here about prayer, and we've got to move on. Prayer is what, my, is what makes God real to us in a personal way. Prayer is what makes... God, real again, can I fathom everything about prayer? No. Am I amazed that God wants to speak to me? Yes. Does God want to make prayer real and personal to me? Yes. How does that happen? By talking to Him. You're like, well, doesn't God get bored with my request, even if I keep bringing the same thing to Him? No, He wants to, he wants to hear those. I mean, if you look at some of the patriarchs, you got Abraham and Moses. They were called friends of God. Why they spent so much time in the presence of God, talking with God. Let me just say this. You will not regret any time spent in praying. Prayer is a privilege. You need to understand, you can text, you can call, you can direct message Jesus anytime you want. You can call him up any time, 24-7, 365, when there's a leap year. God doesn't take that day off either on February 29th. You can talk to him any time. The question is, did you think to pray today? Did you even think to pray this week? So that's the question. Did you even pray this week? See, prayer is talking to God, but you've got to understand prayer is two-way communication. It's just like your husband and wife. You, you're going to have good communication. Both of you got to talk, and both of you got to communicate together. One cannot dominate the conversation or it ain't going to work out. So you need to understand prayer is second key is listening to God. Now, I love this. He says, call to me and what? I will answer you. I will answer you. God's saying, man, if you'll just, if you'll do your part and call and ask, I'll do my part. God's never failed us. God's never forsaken us. Has God done what we wanted him to do? <clears throat> no. God will always do what his will is. But see, prayer is listening to God. He's faithful, folks. And see, this is the part that we're not too good at. Just like husbands, we don't always do great in listening to our wives. We don't always do great in listening to God. You know why? This is how it goes. This is how it goes. 
All right, dear Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for your blessings. Lord, would you do this? You do this. You do this. I need you to do this. I need you to do this. I need you to put a rubber stamp here. Please, please, Lord, would you answer this prayer request? Would you watch over my kids? Would you protect them? In Jesus' name, bye. And you're out the door. And you're five miles down Highway 80. And God's like, hey, dude. Hey, lady. You need to come back here. Because I really have a word for you here. And since you ran out of the house, you're going to run right in, slap in the world, the flesh, and the devil. And you will not be ready. Because you didn't listen to me. See, we're quick to bring our request. But we're slow to listen. That's why some of you would Wednesday night or even this morning. When I pause for a minute up here and it's just silent, it drives you batty. You start getting uneasy. Because you're not spending enough time with Jesus to even hear from him. See, we miss God, folks. You need to understand, yes, keep talking to God. But you need to understand this truth, folks. God knows what we need more than we do. I need to be reminded of that. God knows what we need more than we do. We just need to keep what? Asking, seeking, knocking. Now, will God always, will God ever speak audibly to me? No, I don't think God will speak audibly to you. But will God speak to you in a small, still voice from the Holy Spirit? Yes, He will. That's why we need to listen. See, for some of you today, whether you're in person or online, God's trying to tell you that you need to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's trying to tell you that little prayer you prayed as an eight-year-old and you walked down an aisle, you prayed a prayer to impress your parents, press your friends, press your, any adult. He's been trying to tell you that was some religious formality. you just playing games with me. He said, I'm telling you, you've never surrendered your life to me. You've never experienced the resurrected and living Lord Jesus in your life. You've never repented of your sins. So how can I know I'm a Christ follower? Well, number one, you're going to have a hunger for His Word. Number two, you're going to have conviction of sin, which comes from the Holy Spirit, which will be within you once you give your life to Him. And number three, you'll strive to live a life, a holy life that brings them more. If you have no hunger for word, no hunger for prayer, no conviction of sin, I, don't, I would say you might want to talk with a father and see if you actually know him. You might be Baptist, you might be religious, you might have all the trappings, but that's not what will get you to heaven. See, God knows what you need. See, see you need to understand the gospel is not about praying a prayer. So you can get some forgiveness of sins and think you get out of trouble. That's not what the gospel is. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. What is the gospel? It's where I come to a place and realize, man, I'm a sinner. I cannot get to heaven. I believe that Jesus, the one and only Son of God, the perfect Son of God, died on the cross In my place, he was buried in the tomb, but he rose again on the third day to defeat death, hell, and the grave. And he did that so that I might be reconciled and have a right relationship with God because God is a holy God, and I'm a sinner, sinful, sinful. And the only way I can get to God is through a relationship with Jesus, and it is by faith. It's not by my works. It's not by how much money I give. It's not by what I've done in my life. I came to a place, and I returned from our sins. And Lord, I have been going in the wrong direction. And it's a change of mind, a change of attitude, which led to change of lifestyle. And I received it by faith because I called on the Lord and said, I'm tired, Lord, of living this life. 
change me, save me. And then Jesus says, follow me. Does that mean I live a perfect life? No, none of us do. But it's about living for him. That's how you come to be a Christ follower. I think a lot of people are bought into religious trappings. For others of you, he's trying to tell you, hey, you were like Brother Brad. You walked an aisle like I did. Just baptized in some water. But really didn't get saved until I was 24. You know him, but you've never followed him a believer's baptism. So that's your first step of faith. I really do think it's baptism. For others, he's trying to tell you, hey, it's time for you to, to, to become a member and be, go through this membership class and look at being a member here. God's telling you something like that. God's also speaking to some of you, hey, I want you to serve here. God may be calling some of you to be in the ministry. But see, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, but you, you're like, man, I don't know about this. Let me tell you this. Those things that I just said, you will never do on your own. The flesh, the devil, and the world will never lead you to give your life to Christ, follow Him, be baptized. None of that. But if God is kind of speaking to your heart, and all of a sudden your heart's racing, and while I'm speaking, you got spiritual butterflies going up in your stomach and in your heart and mind, and you know, hey, I'm not right with Jesus, day is the day. You need to call on Him. If you don't know Him, do you have a hotline to Jesus? Yes, you call on Him. Say, Lord, I'm tired of my life. I'm ready to follow you. And He'll save you. See, God knows what we need better than we do. Second, God really wants to spend time with us in prayer. And after you come to know Him, this is, the, I, this is amazing, folks. That Jesus wants to spend time with us. Is our prayers about informing God? No, God knows everything. Then why do we need to talk to God? Because it's about a relationship. And God wants to work in our lives. Again, God works through prayer. That's all I know. I don't have all the intellect and all the knowledge. I just know God works through prayer. That's all I know. Scripture says you have not because you ask not. Okay, let's ask. Okay, Lord, I'm not really bright, but you say ask, I'm going to ask. Okay? You say, is any prayer a bad prayer to ask? I don't think so unless it's in direct opposition to God's will and word. Now, if you start praying prayers like that, God's going to say, I don't think so. But go to God. Jesus prayed. Jesus, the perfect God-man, prayed then why do you and I think we don't have to pray? This truth is just... I'm going to share this truth, and the Lord will hound you with it like he hounds me with it, okay? The busier our Lord got, the more he gave priority prayer. Just think about that. Busier he got, the more he would then get off away and pray. I don't know about you. The busier sometimes I get, I'm not praying as much as I should. Because I've gotten so consumed by the busy that I hadn't had enough time to get away and do the prayer. And you think about that. See, prayer is talking and listening to God. Let me give you this third key. Prayer, this is a good part, prayer is God revealing himself and his will to us. Now, prayer is not about our will, but it's about God's will. And God wants to reveal his will to you. That's pretty amazing. I love what Dr. Aiden Rogers said. He said this, pray, believe, and you'll receive. Pray in doubt, you'll do without. Ask, seek, and say, God, I know if this is your will, hey, you'll take care of it. If it's not your will, you got something better. And so let me give you two great truths here. Number one, the Lord wants to show us great things. 
He really does, folks. He want to show us great things. He says, man, I want, call unto me. I will answer you. And then what? Tell you what? Minute things? He says, what? I want to tell you what? Great and incomprehensible things. Now, what does that word incomprehensible mean? It, it, it's a picture, the word picture of a city that cannot be penetrated and protected by high walls, which is pretty interesting. Jerusalem had high walls, and what happened? King Nebuchadnezzar and them came in and destroyed it. But God is telling Jeremiah, man, I, I want to show you great and mighty things. Thing is, we don't learn these things on our own. We learn them through prayer. See, God wants to show you great things through prayer, folks. Say, Brad, can I, can I get it in five minutes? Some mornings you might. Most mornings I doubt it. What can prayer do? Well, it opened up the Red Sea. It brought water from the rock. Brought manna from heaven. Made the sun stand still. Brought fire down from heaven on Elijah's sacrifice. Overthrew armies, fed the 5,000, healed the sick, raised the dead, and many others. If you don't believe me, read the Bible. <laughs> cover to cover, you'll find how prayer worked. But see, the Lord wants to tell us great things. Now, I think this verse kind of ties in with the verse Paul says in Ephesians, and I really do think this is true. And I love this verse because I really do think this is what God wants to do in our lives. He says, Now to him who is able, talking about God, to do above and beyond all that we what? Ask or think according to the power that works in us. See, He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ever ask, imagine, or dream. The thing is, when you and I decide to start taking God serious with this prayer, and we start asking Him, Lord, may you move here, may you work here, Lord, I need your strength here, I need your guidance here. All of a sudden, as you start spending time with Him, He's sorry, watch this, I'm fixing to supersize this thing like you've never seen before. And then all of a sudden, you're blown away. What is that? God showing us great and incomprehensible things that we cannot even fathom. Let me just say this right here. Church, you need to understand, God wants to do great and incomprehensible things with His church. Now, we will either get on board and get on board with what he wants to do and pray and seek his face, or he'll move on to somewhere else and write Ichabod across the door and say, you just have church and you do whatever you want to. You want, you're like, hey, that means I have no more control. That's right. It's not mine. It's not yours. It's his. He shed his blood for it, and if he wants to do it, you better step in line or you will get taken out by him because he's like, get in line with my will. And I will show you things that you won't even imagine. And you'll be like, wow, can, can you believe God did that? Do you see what God did that? Do you see how God answered that prayer? Did you see how, how God changed that person? Man, that's pretty amazing. How's that going to happen? Praying. Seeking. Trusting. And say, God, you do it. And that kind of prayer will do this. We've got to move on. Unlocks the promises of God. Prayer will unlock the promises of God. Memory verse this week. Don't worry about anything. But everything by prayer and petition. Do what? Make your request known to God. And I love verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, which, this is my, this is my phrase, will blow your mind away. <laughs> surpasses all understanding. Will what? Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. 
See, man, when we start praying and seeking, man, God's going to unlock those promises. He's going to say, man, look at this promise. This is the promise I got for you today. It's right here in your word. Stand on that promise today. And that's going to happen because you talk to God and you listen to God. And as you listen to God, he reveals his will. And he reveals himself to us. And so let me give you two applications very quick. These are not going to take but just a minute. I'm just going to give them to you, drop them in your heart. But one of them is very important. Number one is this. The Bible and prayer are inseparable. You need to read the Bible because it will lead to prayer. And many times prayer will lead you back to the Bible. Okay? Because they work hand in hand like a glove. And then number two, this is, this is, this is the action step today. Take up the 30-minute daily Bible reading and prayer challenge. We already have a reading plan. It's all over the place. It's on the website. You can get anywhere. If you don't have it, can't find it anywhere, you just call the office. We'll email it to you. We have a Bible reading plan. Every five days, you miss a couple of days, you got Saturday and Sunday to catch up. Okay? This is what I'm going to challenge you to do. 15 minutes of Bible reading, 15 minutes of prayer. You're like, Brad, what if I miss a day? Ask God to forgive you. This is not legalism. You come next Sunday, I, you walk through the door, I'm not going to ask you, did you read your Bible and pray this week every day? I'm not going to ask you. The Holy Spirit will take care of that. I'm not God. I don't need to do that. But I ain't going to challenge you as the pastor. You come up in this house, we're going to challenge you. This is not lollipop church. But if you want to see God move, you want to see God work, you want to see God work in your family, you want to see God save your teenagers, your grandchildren, your grandchildren, you want to see, you do not want to miss the message in a few weeks when I preach on students. You might want to be in the house for that one. You do not want to miss it because I will drop stuff on you you probably never heard of, and you might want to stand them on challenge you that day to start praying for kids and students like you've never prayed before. So I challenge you. Take the, you're like, Brad, what if I miss a day? That's fine. Ask God to forgive you and start up another day. How many of you are perfect on your diet? How many of you are perfect on your exercise? Please stand up now. Ain't nobody standing up. <laughs> nobody is standing. So what do you do? Start the next day. That's all you do here. That's all you do. Pray. Talk with God. Can God do it? You're like, Brad, I'm not even a Christ follower. I don't even know about this Jesus stuff. Well, this is my challenge. Start reading one chapter in the book of John. And say, God, I don't even know about what this preacher's pre preaching. I don't even know if I believe this Bible is true. Just say, all right, start reading the book of John, fourth book in the New Testament. Say, God, if you really are real, if you are real, and Jesus was not a fraud, and he was God, you got to reveal it to me. Ask him. I think God's big enough to up to any challenge. You're like, I don't know about that, but try him. If you're not a Christ follower and you're not totally, hey, I challenge you, I double dog dare you to put God to the test like that. Challenge him. So prayer, folks, just get out your phone. Every time, maybe we need to do this. Maybe we put something on our screen to remind us. But every time you open up this thing, Try to remind myself. Maybe it'll remind you to pray. Because prayer is just like calling someone up and having a conversation with God. Just talk to God. Let's work on listening to God. And man, hang around because God wants to show you some great and mighty things which you cannot comprehend. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you. We welcome your spirit in this invitation. Lord, I just ask everyone here and everyone online, have you come to a place where you have surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus? You know for a doubt that you have eternal life. 
And if you're like, Brad, I've never come to that place. I invite you to become a Christ follower today, not by earning it, not by buying it. Just surrender everything that we talked about. Push all in. Give your life to Christ. Say, Brad, I didn't come to do that. Well, do you feel like God's knocking at the door of your heart? Then I invite you to, to call upon him. Say, what do I say, Brad? Well, maybe pray this prayer with me. If you mean it, pray it. If you think this is just some religious exercise, we, God's not into that. But if you're ready to follow him, pray this prayer. Do you mean it? God will save you. Just say, Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've blown it. Sinned against you many, many times. But God, I really do believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. He was buried in a tomb. But he rose again on the third day and he's alive and living today. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, right now, to forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and be my Lord, Master, and Savior from this moment on. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, calling me, and accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. All eyes closed, nobody looking around. Anybody maybe pray that prayer with me in, in the house today? If you did, just kind of raise your hand. Not to embarrass you, but I'd love to just rejoice with anybody this morning. Okay, if you're online, you pray that, let us know. Let me pray forever, Christ follower. Lord, we just come to you this morning. And we probably all could voice this prayer. Forgive us, Lord, for not spending enough time with you in prayer. Forgive us, Lord, when we too many times have treated you like Santa Claus and just gave you a wish list instead of hanging out with you and listening to you. Lord, help us to grow in this area. Help us to understand the importance of prayer. And help us to grow in our relationship with you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you maybe prayed that prayer and gave your life to Christ, especially if you're online, we just in text encourage you to get saved to that number, 478-242-7200. If you're interested in membership, whether you're in person or online, doesn't matter. All this is online now, so... Uh, if you're interested in membership, just text member to that number and you'll get a link and you do all that at your convenience and we know when you've gone through it and then we get with you. Uh, if you've got prayer requests, just text pray to that number. We would love to pray with you. God does answer prayer and we would love to uh, join hands with you and pray for whatever request that is. Uh, if you're interested in baptism, you're like, hey, Brad, I, I am a Christ follower, but I've never been baptized. Just text baptism, and we'll get with you on that. Again, just uh, let me give you these announcements. Uh, parents and students will meet. Give me about five minutes outside, and we'll meet down here front uh, for a brief meeting. Again, if you're interested in shock and all, got any time to go with us this week, I'm telling you, you want to go. It's not hard. This is easy. But you'll be blessed. I promise you, you will be blessed. Uh, just by people saying thank you. You've never had anybody say thank you for something and they're not expecting it. You, you'll be blessed, folks. And then also, uh, students, we start a new series. And I'm going to show you a video. We're starting a new series tonight called His Name. And so as that video is playing, man, y'all can come up. Uh, but I think uh, Megan's going to cue this video. And again, I just encourage you, take up the challenge. 30 minutes. 20 minutes well 20 minutes is better than nothing let's move to 30 minutes it's just like if you're working out hey let's start with two reps and then we might move to five reps or whatever it is you know but start somewhere and let's move forward is the way it goes okay and so is this video all right let's play it
answer for that good word this morning. Amen. Would you stand with us? Sunday Church.